seems legit. Hey Legitimates, welcome back to my channel. Today I am making this beautiful under $10 wrap skirt. Uh, I was originally going to do tassels on the end, which you will see throughout the video, but I have switched to have a ruffle along the edge instead. This is perfect for Christmas because it is adjustable. So no matter how much food you eat, it will still fit you throughout the day. So let's go. So I've got all my pieces. I have cut my own strings. Um, I don't even know what the pattern says, but these are one and a half inches by 24 inches. And I use my ruler and that's why it's in inches. Um, and then I folded it over twice, like a double fold bias tape except I didn't cut it on the bias because they're just ties. So on the open edge only, I'm going to pop this under, then we're gonna stitch and back stitch, and then work our way along. Now I wanna be pretty close to that edge so it stays um, closed. Once you set your hands up in the right spot, it'll just glide through. is a good idea uh, because then it stays where it's told and so I can quickly sew it so we're gonna do that to all four and I'm doing this part first just because it's on top it's how my stuff sits in front of me and I tend to just sew things how they sit Keep going. That's school holidays for you. I don't expect to get anything done in one go. Now, if you're feeling a bit fancy, we can actually just chain stitch all of these. They're not heavy. It's not really going to matter. on this. I find I have worse stitching if I go slow like this. I don't know what's considered slow anymore, but that I find harder than just putting my foot down. Curves are a different story, but straight lines, aim for some speed. Make it your 2024 goals. These are just ties that nobody really looks at anyway. Um, and I'm not sure if I'll wear this again. Red's not really my color. But on the off chance that I do, we are still gonna do a good job. doing this without any overlocking is purely because I'm too lazy to change the overlocker to red. Like if we're going to be honest, which I usually am, I don't want to have to change it over. So because this is such a simple design, I can quite easily just do French seams for this. Um, now there's only, there's four pieces, there's two backs and two what we should call fronts. Two backs, two fronts. And that's it. So the first thing I want to do with this together is sew the back together, which is the longer edge. So the longer edge is the back. Now, what we're going to do is technically you'll be putting wrong sides together. And we're going to stitch with a quarter inch seam allowance, which my machine actually has a, like a mark. Otherwise, you could also get some tape to show you, or depending on your machine, you could put a magnet there. Magnet's not gonna help me in this case, but that's all right. 
So I'm just going to run it along the quarter inch line. Which, let me just pop this in, which if anyone's interested is on here. So it has like a quarter inch mark. Super handy. You also want to make sure these are lined up. Uh, if you're super new to sewing, you might want to use some pins. If you're feeling a bit adventurous, try it without pins. My hands become the pins, is pretty much how that is. So you'll notice like I'm grabbing, and then I can pinch, pinch, hold, and then fold it over so this hand can still guide. the needle down, reassess the last bit, join up the edges, line it up in the middle, pinch, fold over, hold it together. Now if we were making this the normal way, we would do a bigger seam allowance and then overlock this edge. But because of how I've mentally designed this, so the whole bottom I want to put tassels and stuff, I'd only need to overlock these two seams and it's not worth 10 minutes of fighting with my overlocker to do so, honestly. Okay, so now that we've done that, we're gonna, gonna, that's very Aussie of me, we are going to take some scissors and just trim this down a little bit. Does it need to be perfectly neat? Absolutely not. But we do want to trim it down just so that there's less overhang. We could have sewn it less, but that gets more tricky. The smaller you have the seam allowance, the trickier it gets. Although at a certain point, a larger seam allowance also gets tricky. Let me try doing a one and a half inch seam allowance. It's not ideal. I'm going to mess up my beautiful floor that I just cleaned, but it's fine. We're just going to trim down this excess. I'm chopping off about half. Now I'm going to show you the ironing of this first seam. And then the other ones, I won't show you all the ironing because you get the idea. So just chopping like about half. Like that. Put that in the bin. All right, let's go to the ironing board. The iron is now nice and hot, so we're going to take that seam, lay it on the table, and then I'm going to just peel back one of the layers, keeping in mind that this will be the right side, and then I am going to iron the seam basically open. but making sure that it is sitting up. It's important to iron it if you want a good looking French seam. You can skip it. I have been known to not iron it in the past, but I want this skirt to look as cool as possible. So we've ironed it so it's beautiful and flat. Then I'm going to bring this onto that seam and then iron it again. Now, you might be asking, why didn't you just do that the first time? And the answer is, is because it'll be easier and sit nicer if you do it this way. I'm also gonna shoot it with some steam as I go. I want this right on the edge and this I have found is the best way to do it. Is there a better way? Probably. Do I know it? No, or I'd show you. So we want that seam right on the edge and the reason we're shooting it with steam so when I go back to the sewing machine, it'll sit where it's told. Because I like that idea. Remembering that this right now is the wrong side facing up and the inside is now the right side. So this next scene that we sew, you're technically not going to see it. But it does need to exist. So I'm just working my way along, shooting it with some steam. 
just to make sure it stays. This is just cheap fabric, so we don't expect miracles from fabric that's two dollars seventy-five a meter. Okay. Oh, and I've just ironed a whole bunch of creases on the other side, so we're gonna fix that too because that's not gonna fly. I mean, we can obviously iron it later, but they would annoy me. So let's go back to the machine. Now that that's ironed, we're going to put that back under and we're going to stitch a quarter inch again and we're going to close. We're just going to sew another line. Where's my foot pedal? Stitch and back stitch. Make sure that this is actually running underneath. Sometimes it takes a minute to get started because it's a jerk. There we go. Now where my eye focus is, is on the mark that is a quarter inch. Because I've ironed this, everything should just be sitting exactly how I want it to and I don't have to concentrate on constantly fixing this because I steamed it. So this is currently the centre back seam. If you didn't want to get up and down and up and down, you could also sew all the pieces on and then do all the ironing. So now that we go to the front, that raw edge has been hidden in that seam. So the last step for this, you don't have to do this but I want to, is we're going to take the seam and we're going to fold it under and then we're going to top stitch right next to here to hold that seam down flat. Now the hardest problem I'm going to have is my machine misbehaving. This one I'm going to do slowly because it's much harder to... You have to constantly make sure that that's underneath. Again, you could go and do some more ironing for it. You could also do this in a contrasting color to make it pretty. I did think about it. I since decided not to. Mainly because I still haven't decided if I'm doing embroidery on this or not. If I do do embroidery, it won't be Christmas themed, otherwise I won't get to wear this enough, but it will be white, so at least it feels Christmassy. I could also do um, appliques. I could use my sewing machine, or I could use the embroidery machine for appliques. But again, I just, I don't know. So I'm just making sure, this hand's constantly going underneath to make sure that it's tucked under where I'm trying to sew, because if we don't stitch it down it's kind of pointless doing this. Is it an extra step? Yes. Will it make it look pretty? Also yes. But this one is optional. You wouldn't have as many lines of sewing if you use the overlocker, but not all of you have an overlocker. Or a zigzag stitch for that matter. Okay. So that is now the centre back seam. It looks fabulous. Still needs an iron, we're ignoring that fact. Alright, so this is the front. So now we're going to take one of our side pieces. Does it matter which one? No, this fabric doesn't really have a front and a back. And if it does, it's so subtle you can't tell. And nobody's looking at my cheap skirt. So either way, it's all fine. So we want the top, where's the top? This is the top, the shorter edge. 
and we're going to put so this is the top so this is the back we're going to put wrong sides together which is the long bit the point goes down to the bottom because that will be the start of our curve and since I won't be seam hemming that that's fine so we're gonna sew them right sides together then trim iron wrong sides together and then top stitch it so it's pretty and we're just gonna repeat this so again line it up with a quarter inch you could also put a quarter inch foot on again I could find it in a box but I just honestly can't really be bothered not when I don't absolutely need it. I do have a roll hem foot, but I'm pretty sure I want to do the tassel thing. Which is going to be time consuming, I'm not going to lie. But in my head it looks really cool. You could also just buy a trim and add that too. But then it's not a cheap skirt. The whole point is to make this cheap fabric look fancy because as much as we would all love the very pretty expensive fabrics we don't all have the funds for it and i want to prove that we can make pretty things on the cheap so this skirt will be under ten dollars including electricity and the thread so the fabric was 275 a meter and i got two and a half meters Plus a thread, a little bit of electricity. And you'll need an iron. I'm obviously not including the price of a sewing machine and an iron in that. Or scissors, but we're not using pins. So I mean, there's a plus. Now this bottom point is gonna overlap a little bit because the seam allowance should line up. Now because we're doing a different seam allowance, it's actually gonna not line up. I'll show you how to deal with that. I'm not worried. It'll be fine. I promise. Line it up the best we can. We can always trim off bits if we need to. Trim off half the excess, and I mean half is just a guesstimation, so long as we're trimming some off, it won't poke out of the next seam. You could also take this over and use a rotary cutter and a ruler, since technically it is a straight line, but sometimes that's more fiddly than it's worth. And sometimes I don't want to play that game. But again, as long as we cut off something, it'll be fine and not seen. Okay, so then let's do the other side so I can do all my ironing at once and I won't have to get up and down again. As we all know I'm pretty lazy so we are going to put this underneath so this will be the right side here and this top is the right side here I think I hear my child coming back that's all right Everybody has just an unlimited time, and my videos prove that. I have to stop all the time. Oh, come on. Don't chew my fabric. I possibly should have put in a smaller needle for this fabric. This is just a standard 80 needle, but a 70 probably would have been better. Not that I really mind. Line it up. So 
So the hardest bit with a solid print like this is making sure you're putting wrong sides together. And I didn't check that I didn't put this on upside down, actually. That's a very good point. It would suck if I did. I'm not checking now. I just assumed it was fine. Okay, it is. It's always nice to know I did it the right way, though. And again, with a print, this would be much, much simpler, but it would have been much, much more expensive. Um, and I couldn't even find a red and white print in like a soft fabric to make this skirt. I did look. The best I could find was like red and white stripes, but the type of skirt that this is, is a little bit, it's not circle skirt, but the stripes would have looked weird. I don't like stripes that do that. I understand that some people love that look. Uh, it's just not for me. Each to their own and all that jazz. It would have looked nice in a checker, but checker was pretty cleared out too, because everybody buys it this time of year for tablecloths and such. And to be honest, their red's not a very nice red checker in the gingham. I find it's a bit dark. And then I thought I might make this in a dark red, but the only thing I could find was a like deep maroon. There wasn't a, like a blood red. So that would have looked really pretty too. Again, it was there in more expensive fabrics, but on the probability that I won't wear this often, because it is red, no matter which shade I had have picked, there was no point in spending more than is necessary. Okay, I'm gonna go iron these. You don't need to watch that again. And then we can do the next stitching. Ironing is now done. So now we just need to stitch a quarter inch down each of those seams. So again, lined up. Starting this fabric is always the tricky bit because it's so skinny. And off we go. realize my seam allow uh, my seam stitch length was a bit short I'm back on two and a half where I like to be I had it shorter for when I was dealing with fur and fleece and crap can top stitch both of them. Then I'm going to just see this little bit here, we're just going to trim it off, make it continue round the point. That's how I deal with that. And you can see the crease is quite in there. I just have to grab it, pop it under and go again. So there is definitely more stitching this way. That's right. So this ends up giving us a half inch seam allowance. Technically the pattern's five eighths, but it's a wrap skirt, so it won't matter. So then from the front, I'm going 
going to bend these to the center back. So this one will be this way, and this one will be that way. I like doing it like that. You obviously don't have to. You can have them all going the same way if that's more your thing. Uh, but I'm going to do what I'm going to do. pin this over if you didn't want to keep stopping like I am. I'm also trying to keep all this weight on my lap so it's not pulling to the floor. If you're playing along at home, move your machine over so it can all drape. I'm just trying to be at an angle where you guys can see what I'm doing. Makes the sewing a bit more awkward for me, but I'm sure it looks normal to you guys. All the way down, backstitch, pull it out, trim that off. Now, we're going to go from the bottom to the top on this one so that the bulk of the fabric is not shoved in here. It never ends well for anybody. And again, we're going to be fixing that whole bottom, so I'm not too worried about that either. You get into a rhythm. I can see it. I know you guys can't because there's a lot. But I can actually see that it's under where I need it to be. As a general rule for it to flip the other way is very rare. It probably won't do it. But I also like to check. So this is like the super speed version. It's just good for you. Take all the tails. Now, we need to hem this top. A couple of ways you can do that. I am just going to tuck it over and over again like a double folded bias. You could also create a facing and do it that way. I'm quite happy with just this little skinny bit. And I'm going to put the ties on last for where I need them. So we're just going to go under and under again. Now this can get a little bit messy. This is a curve. It is not always my best friend, mean curves, trying to fold them like this. But it can be done. You just have to be patient. Really patient. And if it looks a little bit messy on this side, on the top of the fold, don't worry about that either. This took a lot of practicing to get this good at this, and even then I'm not the best. So right here we're going to have a twist. What we don't, I don't care about that as long as it's not on the other side. Because this is the back, this top little bit here, so you're not even going to see it from the top, like the front. You just need to make sure that the twists aren't heading to the front. Because we are now trying to go up the curve, which, you know, sounds easy enough, but is a nightmare. So this is like center back. If you wanted to put a tag in, now would be the time, because it goes right where my finger is. <laughs> We care less about this back being twisted, so long as the underneath part isn't, is all I actually care about. I'm 
This bit is the fiddly bit. You can iron this or attempt to. Ironing will only do so much though before it's not as much help as you'd hoped. Um, you can also come along and iron it in place or you can just add some clips and just fold parts of it because it'll help. So I'm just doing random parts where I double fold it over in the attempt to kind of keep it the same. You will find that you will automatically fold the same seam allowance. So here's where it gets tricky because here is where the curve is. And it's just the transition from down to up that I always personally struggle with. So get it here, so there and under. And then I just need to fiddle with this little bit here to make it work. It takes a minute, but it can be done if you try hard enough. suspicion it went a bit dodgy but I will check it in a minute. Here's also going a bit dodgy. It's all to do with the curve that I'm trying to make it do. It doesn't want to do it. That's all. It's literally what its problem is. It doesn't want to do the curve. So it is a bit fiddly. And it's never the neatest from the back. And I'm just not worried. As long as it looks good from this side, which it does not. But I will with an iron. Ironing makes everything look better. Okay, so we'll, we'll iron that later. Now what I'm gonna do, I am going to stitch a whole line all the way around at one inch. This is going to stop fraying happening any higher than that. Okay, so I've just gone around and made sure that all the joins are even. We care about that for this next bit. I am now going to do a one inch seam. And this seam is to stop fraying going any higher. So I'm gonna put it there. This is my one inch line here. Um, I don't really have anything to show that to you. I'm just going to... I'm going to go down to a two stitch length. I want the stitches pretty close together so that it can't come undone. That's what I really care about. So I'm going to stitch and back stitch. And then work my way around. doing it this way because I don't know I just find it easier you can also rule a line to just purchase a trimming with tassels. I'm just gonna say that right now, but I'm not gonna do it.
all the way around. The only thing really left to do is attach these. So we are going to put one on each end here like this. I'm going to put them right sides together and stitch so that they'll kind of fold under. But I want to put it all the way back up to the stitch line that I just did, which is why I did that first. So I'm going to stitch, back stitch, pull it out, fold it over, and then stitch it again, just to give it a little bit more added stability. fun one. All right, one, we're going to do the same to the other end. At the stitch line, fold it over. And then if you want, you can just leave it attached. Now, for the wrap skirt, you need to put one of these on the outside and one on the inside. So I'm going to put this one here. Another way to attach these is you can fold it over and then just stitch it down. So this is the one on the outside. And then we'll put one on the inside. So I'm putting it right at that seam. Like that. And then one on the inside seam here. Which is our last one. And what that's going to do is now I can tie it up on the inside and the outside. And then I'll show you how to do our tassels. I just want to go back and forth a few times to make sure that it's really anchored there. So now, let me twist the camera. Okay, so this is the skirt. So I'm going to take this inside one with this outside one here, and we're going to tie that into a bow. Then we take this outside one oh i should have put it over a bit more and then this inside one and it crisscrosses over at the front and ties up like that so this is the skirt it crisscrosses at the front it's got like a high low look you can wear it higher or lower on your body whatever makes you happy and now i just need to make all of the tassels to make it super adorable i'm going to start at this top edge and i'm just going to snip just under the little tab part there and then you're going to want to measure an inch or whatever you're going to use as your measurement i'm going to use a clip right so we put the clip down and then we're going to make a snip all the way to our stitches like that then what we're eventually going to have to do is fray all this out which takes a minute to start off with but it gets quicker Okay, so you can either do it sideways or back to front. Uh, but what I want to do, and these might not be long enough, I do want to tie these in a knot was the plan. But I might have to pull all of these bits out first. So this is the bit that's going to take me forever. I know that. You know that. If you grab about three or four strands at a time, you can probably pull them out. I know it doesn't look like I'm doing much, but I am grabbing a little bit each time and it's creating the fray. Maybe I should have done them two inches long instead of one inch. But that's alright. It'll get there. So the idea is, is that we're going to fray the whole edge, uh, but you want to chop it into pieces so it's easier to do. Because the smaller bits will be easier to pull out. 
like this. Or you can get a quick unpick or a sewing awl and grab them in. I know it doesn't look like I'm doing much, but it is coming. It's just going to take a while. But the idea is, is that it will fray and then we will tie it into little knots. And then voila! Tassels all around the edge. I am not going to show you this in bulk because I'll be here for hours. This is going to go be an inside job while I watch a movie. Um, but you will get like a frayed edge which I will then tie into little knots and make it super adorable. Uh, and so that's what I'm going to do all the way around. Okay, so I decided that that was a terrible idea. So I am going to make a ruffle. So I have cut three and a half inch strips. I just bought half a meter of fabric. Um, or half a meter more, which is still not much. It's like $2.75 a meter. And I'm just going to put them together. Why is that size a different one? There we go, that's better. Alright, so I'm just going to put them, I can't really tell right sides from wrong sides, and I've, I'm going to use my overlocker, I've changed it to red. Could you do this without an overlocker? Yes. Do I want to? No. Just cut off the tails, and then I'm going to open it out, so this is the top, and then grab the next one. This is obviously easier when you've got a pattern or a noticeably right, song, right side from wrong side. I'm just cutting off that salvage edge as well. We don't need that there. Alright, and then we take this right sides up. I don't know how much ruffle I need. I'm going to ruffle it with the overlocker. That's why we're doing this. But yeah, I did three and a half inches because we'll lose half an inch and then we'll probably lose a little bit more when I hem the bottom. So I'm just going to, where's the last one? Here's the last one. Pop that down as well. Size them all up. Always leave a tail on an overlocker. I think that's too bright for you guys to see. Unfortunately, I can't turn down the light. Now, on your uh, overlocker, there should be a little knob here. I, it's currently on N, which I assume means normal. I am going to put it all the way up to two, and this is going to ruffle my fabric, which is awesome, because now I don't have to manually do it. This is just way, way quicker. So pick an edge, any edge, uh, right side up, I like to do, but you can do again, whatever. And that is the wrong foot pedal. I've got both of them down here, I'm just guessing. So, along the edge, and you can see it's going to ruffle it for me. I don't know if you can see that with the light. Let's block the light out. See how it's ruffled? It's going to naturally ruffle it for me. So I'm not going to have to. It's not going to have a huge ruffle, but look at that. It's ruffling it for me, so I don't have to manually pull it. This is way, way quicker. So technically I did make the skirt without the overlocker, uh, but adding a ruffle is definitely quicker with an overlocker. You can do this manually in a sewing machine, so if you don't have one, you do two lines with the longest stitch length you can, and then you've got to feed it all up and gather it. This is just quicker. Again, 
I don't know how much I need, so I'm just making crap loads. You could, it, depending on how gathered you make it as to how much you'll need, so it depends on how much of a gather you want, really. Way easier to do this one than it is the other one. I think. One, two, three. No, I lied. It is the annoying one. Oh, no, they've both come undone. Even better. Okay. So the loopers had a moment. I hate having to re-thread this. This is why we do the pull through. Um, I have done a sewing candy for those that have uh, joined my membership on how the easiest way is to re-thread this. This is the bit I don't like. It, I can do it, I just hate doing it. It's a time consuming nightmare in my opinion. Because this one, like it's it's through the hole, but I also can't grab the back until I feed more through. Except sometimes it doesn't want to feed through. And now instead of coming up, it's angled down. So I've got to try and get the tail and flick it up towards me. There we go. There's one. And then this one goes through here and again the tail sometimes just doesn't want to feed through properly Yoink. there we go now to check to make sure it's threaded properly because even though I've put it in the right holes if it doesn't loop the right way it'll still give us grief so I'm just going to check that theory now we've got a tail again. We are all good. Okay. So now I can go and overlock the end. Which was all I was trying to do originally. And you can see it's now back to normal. Alright. I've just moved angles. But I've just chopped off the outer edges. And I'm now going to overlock at that seam that we did earlier. Because uh, we need to chop off a little bit, otherwise it's going to drag on the ground. So where that line is, I'm just going to chop along the line and overlock the edge. down over the seams because you know they get a bit bulky we don't want to break threads again <laughs> I'm 
actually wondering if I'm going to have enough ruffle. Could I measure it? Yes. Am I going to? No. is uh, washing machine proof that's why I overlook things I'm gonna bring back this and I'm gonna find the right side out and we're gonna start at an edge any edge here we're gonna start at this edge we're gonna take our ruffle of which there is plenty I also need to find the front. So this is the front. Just want to make sure. So we're going to put right sides together. So this is the top and this is the top. I think I need the other end. I'm gonna need the other end to start on this side. Whoop. So this is the end that I overlocked, which is works out even better for me. So once it's untwisted, I'm gonna take the overlocked end and I'm gonna fold it back and top stitch it down so that it's nice on the outside. Yep. And that just come unthreaded because that's how my day is going. I only have a limited time before my child will become bored with what he's doing. I really want to get this done. Okay, so we're going to fold it to the back. Now you know it's the back because we find where the joins are and then just copy. about the bottom in a minute so we're going to take the skirt and we're going to join the ruffle up here and then I'm going to stitch and back stitch and just join the ruffle up so you just line up the edges and off we go now it's already pre-ruffled all I have to do is line up the edges and you can see it's going to be fabulous. Just a bit of a ruffle, nothing too extreme. I didn't want a huge over ruffle. You don't even need to pin this, you just line up the edges and stitch. can see. Isn't it pretty? Just a little extra something. Because I found the skirt boring being plain. Only because it's not a printed fabric. If it was a printed fabric I might have been able to get away without the ruffle. But this is definitely the easiest way to do this. Just gotta keep an eye on my bobbin though. I'm gonna run out soon. I don't know if I'll have enough to go around. I'm hoping so though. If not, I'll just go buy some more. Which admittedly is another pain 
like a pain to go and do another trip. But it's still cheap if you buy it all at the same time. not twisted you don't have to stop as much either i do want to keep the bulk of the weight on the table uh, but don't let it bunch up too much right behind the machine if you can help it just make it I think that's exciting looked that really well. Oh no, except I just made a mistake. This little bit here just got caught up in my stitches. So I have to unpick it. I felt that. I was too busy concentrating on the end. That was my own fault. So I'm just going to snip. If you snip one stitch and then pull, it'll undo like three or four of the next ones. I don't like quick unpicks. I personally always seem to stab holes in my stuff. So don't use them. They don't exist in this sewing space. All right. So I'm just gonna come back to here and re-stitch that. Stitch and back stitch. So I'm locking in the old stitches and the new ones. so much prettier. We just want to have a little bit extra so I can fold it back on itself and not have any raw edges. Uh, but you can see, see the ruffle? So cute. It's just a little bit. Then we just have to hem it and we're going to use the sewing machine and not the overlocker. I need some scissors. So I'm just going to grab these and cut like half an inch past like that. So that's how much I had left from all of the ruffle that I made. And then I can just fold this back and top stitch it down. And I might want to overlock that edge. 
Oh, you can double fold it. Oops, wrong puddle. No. That puddle. I get them in the end. Turn that off. So now I've just got this little bit. I'm just going to tuck it under and top stitch. Back stitch. And top stitch. And then back stitch at the other end as well. Boom. See, now it's finished right in line. I'm going to wind a bobbin and then we will hem the bottom and be done. Bobbin is done. I am going to use this foot. It is a roll hem foot. Uh, narrow hemmer foot is what the actual little piece of stuff says. Uh, it comes with instructions, but that's fine. I know what I'm doing. Uh, so you can see here, it's going to roll the fabric into there and then stitch it down. So we just take that foot off. It's one thing I like about domestics. Very quick to like change the feet. So we're going to go to the back. And I always like to get it started, so I'm going to double fold it over like this and then pop it under like that. We're going to stitch and then we just feed the fabric into that little loop and it will do all the work for us. It's a very, very narrow hem. Uh, you can get different size ones of these. I'm just going to move my presser foot. So I'm just going to hold it like this up so that it will fold through. And I can probably make the stitches a little bit longer. So you can see it's... Oh, you can't see yet. I'll do a bit more so I can bring it closer to the thing for you. All right. So now I can bring it closer. So the stitch is really close to the edge here. And then on the back, it's just a really narrow hem. It's perfect for like handkerchiefs and stuff. For those that still make and use those. Hold it and feed it through. Now where we're going to run into some troubles always is where the seams are. They always give me green. Just because they're a bit thicker. Uh, so sometimes I have to hold this side and help kind of force it through or it won't go just because it is thicker there. But when there's not a seam, so you, I don't know if you can get close enough to see that, but it is down and it's looking amazing. And the small seam will just help the ruffle look nicer, I think. Again, your choice. You could also just overlock it and turn it up. But if you've got the foot, this is definitely quicker. It is merely guiding. And everything just fell off the table. We don't want that. So I'm going to put it in my lap instead. Alright, so I'm coming up to another seam here. So I'm going to slow down for a start. And then when I get right to the start, I'm going to pull. Love it. Looks amazing.
coming up to another seam. Also, you want to have this seam facing the same way. So if you need to flip it forward, do that. Slowly over that seam, should get it up. I do love this skirt. I think I'll be making more. We're over halfway, so that's a good start. Here's a seam again, so we're gonna help fold it over, pull it through. Nearly there. Beautiful. So now the ruffle is hemmed. And see how it's still quite light? It's not too thick. It looks amazing. So the last step is I'm going to change out my feet. I just need to put the ties back on because I took them off earlier because we changed our mind. And I'm going to attach them to here behind the ruffle. So not to the edge of the ruffle, but to this bit here. So I'm just going to pop it down and we're going to stitch and back stitch and stitch and back stitch. Now there is another thing you can do if you want to um, and that is you can come along on the, the skirt side of the ruffle and stitch this down if you wanted to have another stitch there but you don't have to do that. It's just an optional extra. I'm going to come over to this side and again I'm going to push this over and I'm going to grab the other tie and then pop it here and then stitch it down, out, not in, there, stitch, back stitch, stitch, back stitch. I'm nearly out of thread. That was pretty close. Happy days! One fabulous wrap skirt. I hope everybody learnt something. Um, let me know in my Facebook group if you are making your own Christmas outfit this year. I'm still undecided. I don't think I need to stitch that down. I think it'll be fine just the way it is. But it's so cute. I'm gonna look adorable. Alright guys, till next time!